In the immortal words of Mick Jagger, you can't always get what you want. We have unlimited wants, but limited resources, and in an economic system, when we talk about resources, we're talking about land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, the four factors of production. And because these are limited, it creates a scenario of scarcity, the lack of abundance of resources, which results, because of scarcity, results in us incurring explicit and implicit costs when we produce and results in every decision we make having some sort of trade-off. For example, if I decide to manufacture this marker, it has explicit costs. Money I have to pay, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship to create this. But there are also implicit costs, and those are called opportunity costs. I could have, instead of putting my resources toward creating this marker or manufacturing this marker, I could have manufactured three pencils. I didn't. That is my implicit cost, giving up that opportunity in order to manufacture this marker. So every decision we make has a series of trade-offs. And there's a model in economics called the production possibilities curve that illustrates this concept of opportunity cost and trade-off. So let's take a look at that. And here's a constant production possibilities curve. And it compares two goods. We've got good A and good B. And what this curve is saying is that every point along this curve, and it doesn't really look like a curve, it's a straight line. Every point along this curve, though, is our possible production. It's where we, if we fully employ our resources, it's what we could possibly produce. For example, if we put all of our limited resources in producing good B, and let's say these are in billions of units, we can potentially produce 12 billion units of good B. That's the maximum capacity for our economy. If we put all of our limited resources into producing good A, we can produce 6 billion units of good A. We obviously can't do both. As we move from one to the other, there has to be a trade-off because we only have limited resources. And we want to know what the marginal cost, or really the marginal opportunity cost, is for every unit of good A that we want. What is the marginal opportunity cost of good B? What do we have to give up in order to get more of good A. So let's say in our economy we're using all of our limited resources to produce good B and we're producing 12 billion units. But people say, society says, we want more good A. So from going from zero units of good A to one billion units of good A, because society demands that, what is going to be the trade-off? Well, according to this curve, we're going to have to trade off 2 billion units of good B if we want 1 billion units of good A. So that is the opportunity cost. We have to give up the, the possible production of 2 billion units of good B if we want 1 billion units of good A. It's constant because if we want 1 more billion units of good A, we have to give up 2 more. If we want 1 more of good A, we have to give up 2 more of good B one more of good A, two more of good B, and so on and so forth. That's why it's a constant marginal opportunity cost. For every unit of good A we want in addition, we have to give up two billion units of good B. Let's look at an example of an increasing marginal opportunity cost production possibilities curve. And let's look at two different goods. We've got toys and guns. So in this economy, let's say we are using all of our limited resources to produce toys. We are producing 12 billion units of toys at full maximum production using all of our resources for toys. But society then says, we want to produce some guns. We probably need some guns. All right, so we want to know what the opportunity costs, what is the trade-off if we want to start manufacturing guns. So let's say we want 1 billion units of guns. So we're going from zero to one billion units of guns. This curve shows us that it costs, the trade-off or opportunity cost is around one billion units of toys. So if we want one billion units of guns, we have to give up the opportunity of manufacturing or creating one billion units of toys. 
okay? But let's say society says, more guns, please. All right, so we go from one billion units of guns to another billion units of guns. Now we're manufacturing two billion units of guns. Our trade-off, well, we have to trade off, we have to go down to about close to eight billion units of toys. And from 11 to eight, that from, from one to two, it's gonna cost about three billion units of toys in order to create that additional billion units of guns. It's an increasing marginal opportunity cost. And of course, if we go from two to our maximum three, that's going to cost the rest. So from about eight to about zero. So about eight billion units of guns it's going to cost to get to that three billion units of guns. So you see that that cost is increasing. And the reason why that happens is Let's say for the first, if we move to 1 billion units of guns, if we were just making toys, but we start making guns, maybe there's one factory that has the correct tools and labor to easily shift over from the toy manufacturing to the gun manufacturing. Well, that's the low hanging fruit factory. We're gonna use that one first. That one's gonna switch over first if society says we want more guns. As we, get, as we need or want more and more guns, it's gonna be harder for the factories, for our limited resources here to make a quick and easy shift over to producing guns, which gives us our increasing marginal opportunity cost as we move, move, further, move, move farther into wanting more guns. Let's look at a few scenarios involving production possibilities curves and how they can change and looking at how this illustrates an increasing economy or growing economy and or a shrinking economy and let's start we're going to look at uh, BB here as our starting point for each one of these scenarios so our curve BB is always the beginning point point. and we're going to look at technology natural resources and government, re government restrictions and or policies and how c that can affect our uh, economy and our production possibilities. So if we're starting at BB and let's say that our capital goods here are machinery, like we're, we can manufacture and put our limited resources into manufacturing machinery or we can, uh, our consumer goods, let's say shoes. All right, so we're either producing shoes or machinery. Let's say a technology is discovered that makes shoe production much more efficient. Just shoe production. It doesn't translate into other manufacturing. So we're going to see a shift in the curve from BB to BD. So just the consumer good, just our shoe manufacturing will shift out and we'll be able to produce more shoes given, this, given our limited resources. So technology can have an effect uh, specifically efficiency of production. It can increase efficiency of production. Now, let's say the technology was developed some sort of software or hardware for computers that makes all of manufacturing more efficient. We would see then a shift from the BB curve. We would see a complete shift out to C, C because all of manufacturing has become more efficient through this technology. Let's talk about natural resources and an example. Uh, one, one way of getting at more resources in order to shift our production possibilities out and grow our economy is through trade, which we will deal with later. But another way is to find natural resources in the country. For example, we find oil in Alaska, decide to drill it and make that available to our economy. That fuel source is going to have a positive impact on all of manufacturing, and it's going to move our curve from B, B, if that's where we currently are, then the new fuel sources come into the economy, which we didn't have before, new resources. It could shift our curve out to C, C, growing our economy. Now, if we have government restrictions or government policies that come into place, like the EPA, for example, puts restrictions on manufacturing. The EPA has a new restriction that says some sort of manufacturing process or chemical is no longer uh, uh, allowed to be used for long-term environmental protection reasons. We may go from B, B, 
where we there are possibilities here for production, it may actually shrink our economy and we may end up at a, a slowing down the production of our economy or the possible production in our economy in order for a long-term view of saving the environment. Now let's talk about X and Y as well. Now X is outside of our frontier. If we are currently operating at BB, it's way outside of our frontier. We're not there yet. We want to get there. We want to grow our economy through technology and getting more resources, but we're not quite there, so it's outside of our frontier. Y is well inside the curve. It means that our resources, our four factors of production, are not operating at full employment. And as, as this gets further in, if we're operating at BB, this is pretty far in there. That could be a scenario like the Great Depression, when there's high unemployment and a lot of factories and businesses are not producing at full employment. A final look here, we've got capital goods again and consumer goods. The goal is to figure out ways through technology and resources to grow our economy and then decide as a society what we value here. Do we value consumer goods? Are we going to make the choice to be at the point along this curve where we're, where we're producing more consumer goods or do we choose to produce more capital goods? Using our scarce resources, it's a constant debate where we should be along our current production possibilities curve with every decision having an opportunity cost and for every decision we have to make constant trade-offs.